Hey everybody. Let's talk about bullies. How many of you have encountered bullies in your lifetime? My whole life, I was bullied. Pretty much all of it. Not only was I abused at home, but when I would leave the house, the people outside and at school would bully me as well. I learned how to fight very, very young. I was trained how to fight very young. When I was, oh gosh, I can use any age, but let's just say when I lived in Alameda and I was in ele grammar school, in grammar school, no, no, wait, middle school, I was in middle school. And when I lived in Alameda, the school was mostly black and Asian. There weren't a lot of mixed people, especially ones like me, because I'm very mixed. Um, mostly Mexican, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, Filipino, a little bit of black, Native American, um, and some other stuff. But I'm very pale, and I speak proper, so I never fit in. So when I moved to Alameda, even though I came from a prominent family, I had a lot of problems with bullies. I would go to school and people would pick on me and I would get in fights. One time, you know, here's the thing. There weren't very many choices at my school on the race side of who you date. And because I always dated black men, that was always an issue. It was always an issue. Now, mind you, there's nothing hardly else at the school I'm going to, even though that wouldn't have made a difference because my preference would have still been the same. But I encountered so much prejudice going through that and dating. I remember one guy, I was, one time I was dating a guy, he was a brother on the football team. And we were young, so it wasn't like anything big. But I ended up getting jumped by eight women. They weren't women, they were girls. Eight girls. <sighs> very unfair fight, but I did very, very well. I did very well. Shocked the shit out of them. So well, in fact, they had to come back day two and try again. Man. I would tell people, I don't wanna fight you. But they would force me to. There was a time a woman, a girl, I keep saying woman because we're grown now, so I'm used to saying adult, not children. When I was younger, I could remember a time of a girl walking up to me who had never seen me in life. She had outweighed me by at least 100 pounds. She was huge. And we ended up fighting because someone told her I said something, which wasn't true. But it was to try to get us to fight. And because I was always getting in fights, people found it quite entertaining to watch me fight. Partially because I'm quite good at it. I don't like it. But growing up in the lifestyle I did, I learned very young how to protect myself in many different ways. I never understood bullies. I actually always tried to be nice to the bullies even and say, can we not do this? I'm not trying to fight with you. This is ignorant. This is dumb. But, you know, that didn't always work. Sometimes it did. Sometimes you could talk your way out of it. And then sometimes there are people who you just, no matter what you do, you'll never be right. And they'll try to goad you into a fight. See, now that I'm older, I know how to control myself better. When I was little and I was being bullied every fucking day, it was a little different. I got bullied so bad that my family actually gave me a butterfly knife to carry. I never had to use it. I never would use it. Except I did a lot of tricks. I loved doing tricks with my butterfly knife. I was really, really good at it. There was a news article on it. I was on the news once and they had interviewed me for... Well, so, oh God, what was it that time? My, my family in the, well, my family works at some of the news stations and stuff. So, yeah. But um, it was funny because I had done this interview as, when I was younger. And they said, what is your good luck charm? 
And it's very sad when a 12 year old's reply is my butterfly knife. That shouldn't be a good luck charm. It was for protection so that the bullies, they didn't just want to fight me and hurt me. They wanted me dead. See, I make light and I smile and stuff, uh, but my life was a lot more complex because of my family and who they were, are. So there's a certain level of, uh, I don't know how to say it. But anyway, bullies suck. Bullies really suck. I always tried not to be one, even during my time growing up and being abused. I tried not to carry that forward and I don't um, try to project any of my negative stuff on other people. Just because I grew up fighting and having to defend myself doesn't mean that I have to continue that cycle. Nor does it mean my children have to live that. Nor does it mean that I have to choose to stay around that. See, when you're young, you really don't have a choice of where you're at. You just kind of have to be where your parents tell you you're under their lock and key. So depending if you had good parents or not, which I did not, it could really mold you into something. See, the way I was groomed was to be used in the entertainment industry for sex or to go into the political field and be a speaker or to be some high-powered man's wife. It wasn't about independence and freedom and knowing thyself. It was about let me control you. Let me groom you and control you and put you in an environment that will hopefully get you adapt to adapt to a belief system that isn't yours intrinsically. That didn't work for me. Even through all the shit, all the fights, all the drama, all the beatings, everything, death threats, I still am me, I still have my soul, I'm still good. You can't turn me evil, it just won't happen. See, I know that checkerboard, chessboard. I know the numbers. I know enough of the crafts. I know God. I know Jesus. I, so I know in my spirit where I belong. I'm not a product of my environment. Just because I was beaten, just because I got in a lot of fights, just because I was bullied at school, just because people always wanted to pick on me, doesn't mean I have to turn around and pick on other people. No. When I see bullies and assholes, I'm more interested in what happened to you? Why are you such a jerk? Something must have really fucking hurt you. What happened? I'm so sorry. What happened to you? I've had people at times who wanted to fight me who ended up becoming my friend. Go figure. <sighs> I remember another incident. It doesn't have to do with fighting. It has to do with cheating. I was young still. I was dating this guy, same football player on the football team. Cute brother, too. Cute. All the girls liked him. So I remember one day I seen him on the field playing football and he didn't have his jacket on, which was kind of rare. I was like, okay, cool. And I look and another girl is wearing my boyfriend's Letterman jacket. Oh, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And we go and I walk up to her and I'm like, hi, I see you have on so-and-so's jacket. And she's like, yeah, it's my boyfriend. And I had to take pause. Uh, huh? <laughs> Is your what? It's my boyfriend. He let me wear it. I'm thinking to myself, really now? <laughs> okay. He's been my boyfriend for quite some time, but okay, okay. But I didn't get mad because I knew obviously she had no idea who I was and she obviously and she seemed like a nice person. So I'm like, OK, let me check my approach here. How am I going to approach this? Because this woman girl seems nice, although she's dating my boyfriend and I'm no sucker. So my approach and I had asked her a few things and I, and I had let her know that him and I had been talking, but we ended up becoming the 
best, best, best of friends. Go figure, go figure. See, oftentimes when, when people date people, they have a preference. They have a specific thing that they generally like and they're attracted to. So I assumed, okay, if he liked my personality and I know I'm cool and I know the type of person I am, I'm gonna assume that this girl that he was cheating with is probably somewhat similar. And she was, she was real naive, like I was, didn't know what was going on. And instead of us fighting and going through all this hoopla and drama over a male, we talked it out, worked it out, and actually became the best of friends. Oh my God, he hated it. It was torture to him because I let, we both let him go, obviously. But we remained really tight friends all through school. She was a nice skater. She was, she, she, she was really nice. She's nice. But bullies suck. Why do people bully? What causes people to turn around and be assholes to others? What causes people to be keyboard warriors, stalkers, assholes, abusers, beaters, and controllers of people? Why do abusers want to control people? Why? It's because they can't control their self. They don't have the true knowledge of self. The only way to get a person to think different and do different is to show them different. Yeah, I've been in a lot of fights. I actually slit a face once of a friend of mine from here to here, all the way across her face. We, yes, and I said friend because we were younger and she approached me and wanted to fight over something. She's on my Facebook still. She wanted to fight over something, a guy, and I wasn't having it. She came up behind me and pushed me and she tried to get me to fight her. And I was like, I'm not gonna fight you, it's petty. This isn't even your business, it has nothing to do with you. It's a waste of time, there's no gain. And I tried to walk away and she pushed me again and I turned around She's much, much, much bigger than me. She's really tall, really tall. And um, most people may have been frightened. But being that I grew up and trained with a lot of sports people and industry people, and my grandfather is a black belt in many different martial arts, and I, was, I just told her, you don't want to do it. I laughed. I was with my friends, and I laughed. I said, you don't want to fight me. You just don't. Trust me. And she, I tried to walk away again a third time. I am trying to be the bigger person. I'm not going to fight you. But it didn't work because she, she hit me. She turned around. She pushed me. And she gave me this little slap. But the slap really wasn't hard. It was just to intimidate me to get me to fight her. And I very kindly said, so-and-so, you don't want to do this because it's going to end bad for you. And I, and, and, and I tried again to walk away, it didn't work. So she grabbed me and I told her, look, I'm gonna stand here. I'm gonna let you hit me. I'm just gonna stand here and take it. Give me, what, give me the best you got, because I'm telling you, if you don't get me down on the first try, it ain't gonna be pretty for you. Can we not fight? So she wanted to fight. And I, I stood by what I said because I already knew I could fucking destroy her. I, I knew it. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to fight. So she hit me in my face. And I just, you know, gave her one real good BAM right to her face. She went. I reached. It was up, actually, because she was taller than me. So I, I reached up and I punched her. And I got her in the gut, too, you know, right in the solar plexus. I think that's where I actually hit her first. Now that I think about it. I think I have it backwards because she's tall. I don't know if I hit her face first. But I hit her. I remember hitting her in the face and hitting her in the stomach. Because I hit her in the solar plexus to get her to bend down and be out of breath so that I would have time to get the fuck away. Because I'm not really trying to fight her. So I punched her. She went down. I hit her again. It cut her face. 
police came, nothing happened, they let it go, it wasn't a big deal because, you know, it just was what it was. But I hit her, she went down, she was out. And I stood there over her crying, why did you make me hit you? Why? I didn't want to fight. I helped her up off the fucking ground. And the only reason the cops came by was they were in the area. They seen the fight. So, you know, it was by the school at the time. So, <sighs> bullies don't be bullies. It's not worth it. There's no gain. So what if you beat someone up and you hurt their flesh? What does that do for you? What? How does this help you, bully? What does this give you? What kind of... I don't get it. I hate bullies. And I hate friends who pretend to be your friends, but really... That is dope. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Can you see this? This is the coolest bike ever. Can you see it? I don't know if it's showing in my viewfinder. I don't know. Oh my gosh. That is dope. I don't know if it was showing. Bullies don't be bullies. The only way, I, in my opinion, to stop the bullies, for me, is trying to understand them a little bit, work through the emotional shit, and let it go. We don't have to hate each other. It's not worth it. There's no gain for you or me. I want to see people succeed in life, even the fucking bullies. And the only way for people to do better is to be shown better and to be treated better. Maybe if you start treating people better and are an ambassador on the good side, good will start coming to you. And you'll start behaving better and people around you will start behaving better. It's like a chain effect. Try it out, bullies. Let's not be bullies. Let's, start, let's try to work out our differences. And if we can't, Okay, it happens. Not everybody agrees on everything, and that is okay. Agree to disagree. Period. Walk away. It's not worth it. It's not worth the time of day for you to sit and fight with somebody. There's no gain. It's ego. That's all it is. Freudian false identity. Lack of knowledge of true self. I'm trying to learn my true self. I'm getting there, man. It's hard work because shadow work is nasty. Shadow work means getting into the things on the darker side of you that you try to ignore and don't like. But you have to deal with it. You have to deal with every, every single aspect of yourself. Hold yourself accountable. Be your own judge over yourself because you live your actions. Hold yourself accountable. Take a look at your life. Hold yourself accountable. Accept responsibility. Say you're sorry to people you should say you're sorry to. And then just try to do better. See, people will often forgive people if it's genuine because you could feel it. We all make mistakes. Everybody mistakes. Everybody fucks up. See, I fucked up saying mistakes. I'm mistaken on the mistakes. <laughs> you guys, I really like you all. I really want everybody to have positivity. I don't want people to go through the abuse that I went through because my abuse was not nice. No abuse is nice. I'm going to start sharing maybe some little stories here and there about some of the little things I've been through, some of the abuse and how I got over it, some of the super soldier pro programming and how I didn't activate under it, monarch programming, all kinds of programming. Because once you could see, once your vision is clear, your life changes. And you see how close death is, right? Because every day is, a, you know, the, just a blessing. We don't know if we're going to be here tomorrow. So if you live your life like you're, not like you're dying. I don't want you to live like you're dying. But think like if this was your last day on earth, what would you want people to know, do, think about you? What would you want to put out there to be 
remembered to be helpful. I'm not saying you, you're dying tomorrow. I'm just, because we're eternal beings. We are in our flesh suit right now on the earth to learn our earth lessons. But when we leave here, don't you dare think that, you, that it's over. It's just another transformation. So you could choose to learn your life lessons now and get it right before it's too late so that you can move on to the next level.